Okay guys, I'm back. So what we've done here is just calculated the uh, impedance of the circuit, which is the phase or sum of the two gadgets that are in this circuit. And now that I've calculated the impedance of the circuit, I can calculate the current in the circuit. This is a series circuit, so there will only be one current, and I can calculate that current using Ohm's law. I'm going to do it right here. I is going to be E total over Z. And this is exactly the same formula that you would use in level one to calculate the total circuit current. It would be the total voltage over, you know, RT, but there is no such thing as RT now. RT is now replaced with Z. And so if I want to calculate the current in this circuit, it is going to be 100 volts over 57 ohms. And it comes to, well, let's do it, 100 divided by 57 equals, oops, got to straighten my paper here. I want to make it in the center thing. Looks like 1.75 eh. four amps flowing in this circuit. Now, now that we've calculated the total circuit current, we've just basically applied Ohm's law to the entire circuit. Now, I would like to actually apply ohms to the individual components in the circuit, just like we did with our resistor circuit. And so I'm going to do that. Um, if I want to calculate E, the voltage dropping across the resistive part of the circuit, we're going to call that ER, and it is I times R. And we just calculated the current at 1.754 amps, and the resistive part of the circuit was... 35 ohms and so I can calculate that voltage. I'm going to do it off camera here 1.754 times 35 Comes to 61.4 Volts dropping across the resistive part of the circuit. I can also calculate EXL It is going to be I times XL Basically, the same as level one, if you wanted, you know, ER2, it would be I times R2. Well, now I'm calculating EXL. It is I times XL. And so, my current, 1.754, and my XL was 45 ohms. 1.754 times 45 equals 78 Point nine three volts. Those are our two voltage drops in the circuit. Now if you look back here, you can see that the total circuit voltage is 100 volts and supposedly I've got, you know, almost 80 volts dropping on one component and 61 volts dropping on the other component and that doesn't seem to add up to 100, but it does as long as you add them up as phasers. And so we're going to do that right now. Here's my little phaser world. Once again, we're going to compare our phasers to the current. I'm going to draw this 61.4 volts as a phaser. And since it's a resistor, it's going to be in phase with the current. And so I'm going to draw it right here. This is what we call ER. It is 61.4 volts. And EXL, which is 78.93 volts, that voltage, since it causes the current to lag by 90, that voltage is leading by 90, and leading phasers are counterclockwise. And so if I were to draw that phaser, it would sit right here. Now I'm going to move it tip to tail, which means it sits right here. There's EXL. It is equal to 70, whoops, 78.93 volts. And supposedly, the sum of these two, the phasor sum of these two, is equal to my total circuit voltage, which is 100 volts. Let's find out. Here is the sum of the two, E total. It should be equal to the square root of 78.93 squared plus 61.4 squared. And let's just see, I'm gonna calculate it right off camera here, camera here. plus 61.4 squared 
equals root equals comes to 99.999 so that equals 100 volts boom how do you like that now there is one more thing that I can calculate here and that is the phase angle if we look at our circuit we know that this thing causes the current to be in phase this thing causes the current to lag by 90 and so if I took a scope and looked at this you know I would see the voltage and current right on top of each other if I took a look at this with a scope I would see that the current was lagging by 90 degrees so what if I took a look at the whole thing with a scope you know what the where would the voltage and the current be and I can use this phasor diagram or this phasor diagram to calculate the phase angle this is really the diagram that's you know shows it because here's my voltage you can see my current is here it is lagging some amount I don't know exactly how much we can calculate it but if you don't happen to have this phasor diagram you can also use this phasor diagram because these two triangles have the exact same angle so just for fun I'm going to use this phasor diagram here to calculate the phase angle. The phase angle should be the opposite over the adjacent inverse 10, 78.93 over 61.4, 10 to the negative 1. And I'm going to calculate it off camera here, 78.93 divided by 61.4 equals shift tan equals 52.12 degrees what that means is if I took a look at the entire circuit with a scope what I would see is you know my voltage kicking around like that there's my voltage and my current it would be lagging by 52.12 degrees and so you know, it'd be sitting like this, something like that, where that distance there is 52.12 degrees.